Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining ITI's VPAT training session, a practical guide to reporting accessibility conformance using the VPAT. My name is Julie Zaklis Antow, and I lead accessibility work at, here at ITI. For those who are not familiar with our work, the Information Technology Industry Council is the premier global advocate for technology, representing the world's most innovative companies. Founded in 1916, ITI is an international trade association with a team of professionals on four continents. We promote public policies and industry standards that advance competition and innovation worldwide. Our diverse membership and expert staff provide policymakers with the broadest perspectives and thought leadership from technology, hardware, software, services, and related industries. This session is being recorded and will be available on ITI's website alongside the training's PowerPoint presentation. It is now my pleasure to give the stage over to our incredible accessibility policy committee members and highly experienced accessibility experts, Mary Jo Mueller and Steve Kerr to get our training started. Welcome to the ITI um, VPAT training. This is a refreshed course from the one we published a few years ago. I'm Mary Jo Mueller, and I'm IBM's Accessibility Standards Program Manager and the chair of ITI's VPAT committee. Hello, I'm Steve Kerr. I'm an accessibility analyst with Google. I'm currently serving as the vice chair for ITI's accessibility committee, and my VPAT experience has been in both the public and private sectors, from reviewing ACRs in our procurement process to filling out VPATs during the product development. In case you didn't receive this information earlier, the slides are available for download from the ITI website. Um, you can use either the QR code or the um, link that's provided on this slide. Um, I think we'll provide the link in the chat as well. Uh, before we begin, I wanted to let you know that if at any time you have a question, there's a Q&A button that you can find in the center of the toolbar ribbon at the bottom of the meeting window. Julie from ITI will be gathering the questions during the presentation, and then after we're done with our presentation part of the webinar, we'll take a five-minute break, followed by time that we've already set aside to answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's get started with a quick poll. What is your level of experience with the VPAT? This can help us tune the presentation and give examples that are most meaningful to you. I'll give you a couple minutes to complete the poll. All right, so there's quite a number of you. Um, we had 106 votes, 51% or 54 of you are beginners, uh, where 39% uh, or 41 of you are intermediate and 10% are expert. So this is going to be a good webinar for those of you who are beginners and intermediates and, and hopefully even the experts can learn something as well. Right, so what are the goals of this training? Um, this training aims to give you a better understanding of accessibility conformance reports that are created using the Voluntary Product Accessibility Template, or VPAT. We'll cover how they're used, how to write a conformance report using the VPAT, and what to look for when you're reviewing an accessibility conformance report. We'll not be providing training on accessibility standards, specific criteria or requirements, and we won't be covering how to test for accessibility, only on how to use the VPAT to report your test for results. We also won't be providing any compliance information regarding what you need to do to meet regulations. As its name indicates, the Voluntary Product Accessibility Template is a template, and it's used to create accessibility conformance reports. It's pre-filled with some instructions and the accessibility standards and guidelines criteria. An accessibility conformance report or ACR 
is a VPAT that's been fully completed. It's the result of filling out the template with the results of your product evaluation against the accessibility standards. It is a report that lists any accessibility conformance issues with the product. It is not a certification. The VPAT was initially developed as a procurement tool to help government buyers determine the accessibility of IT products and services. It provides a framework for reporting on a product's conformance to standards. By using a standardized template, buyers can more easily compare products to ensure they're purchasing the most accessible product for their teams. Can accessibility conformance of a product be summed up to a simple yes or no? The short answer is no. One of the benefits of the VPAT is that it allows you to view conformance details for each criteria in a standard. Accessibility standards are complex and a product that is accessible to one user may not be so accessible to another. Minor accessibility issues can still exist in an otherwise accessible product. The ACR helps demonstrate a degree of conformance, which can be more helpful than expecting a yes or no answer on if a product conforms to a standard. Most software has issues, including accessibility issues. It's a huge difference between a no for a product that ignored accessibility altogether and a no where a good bit of time and attention was given to accessibility, but there's still some remaining issues. For more information on why this is important, please check out ITI's Reporting Conformance to ICT Accessibility Standards resource linked from the slides. Many different organizations produce ACRs using the VPAT. This includes companies that do business with governments or government agencies, information and communications technology related companies, which range from small to large corporations, as well as manufacturers and suppliers who want or need to provide ACRs for their products and services. Using the VPAT is the de facto method for reporting product conformance to accessibility standards. Who reads ACRs? ACRs are often read by procurers. This can include people making purchasing decisions for federal governments and are also used in the procurement processes of many international government government agencies. ACRs are used in sectors where accessibility is a priority, such as for private sector corporations or in education, banking, transportation, many other business sectors. Also, they are often read by consumers. If you want to better understand if a product is accessible for your needs, an ACR can be a helpful resource before purchase. The VPAT is currently available in four editions. The WCAG edition includes all the versions of WCAG 2, including 2.0, 2.1, and 2.2. The 508 edition includes the revised 508 standards and WCAG 2.0. The EU version includes the EN301549 version 3.2.1, as well as WCAG 2.1. The INT, or international version, includes all of the above in one template. These templates can be found on the ITI VPAT page, which is linked from the slides. ITI publishes the latest version of the four VPAT editions on their website. They are regularly updated to ensure the latest requirements are included, so we encourage you to always use the latest version of the template when working on the accessibility of your product or service. So which edition should you use? That depends on a few things. What are the requirements of your customers? Are there any existing requirements in your organization? Do you do business internationally or only with a specific region? What accessibility standards do you evaluate against? These questions can help you determine what template you should use. If you're unsure about what to use, use the INT edition. Early on in your product development, you'll need to decide on which WCAG version you want to be testing and reporting on in your ACR. You also need to decide what WCAG levels you'll be testing against. All three levels of criteria within WCAG, level A, AA, AAA, um, or are you going to do a combination, level A and AA? 
Note that the revised Section 508 requires WCAG 2.0 at the level AA, while EN 301549 requires WCAG 2.1 at the AA level. Other jurisdictions like the United Kingdom are starting to require WCAG 2.2 at the level AA. Be sure to check the ITI website for the latest version of the VPAT and for the edition that you want to report on. <clears throat> the VPAT versions change over time due to changes in standards, which is indicated if, with an uptick of the numeric version number. For example, VPAT 2.5 was the version used when WCAG 2.2 criteria were added. Versions that are marked with REV, like the upcoming 2.5 REV, um, don't have any requirements changes um, to indicate. Um, so it, it uh, indicates that there are not substantive changes. So the instructions or, you know, there's some editorial or formatting changes in the VPAT. Though you don't fill in the VPAT at the beginning of a product cycle, if you have tooling that automatically builds your ACRs, you may want to make updates in preparation for filling it in. Noting an update to the version number also lets you know when standards have changed that you might need to support, especially for new products or major product updates where you might need to update your test plans to ensure products are up to date with the most current requirements. Knowing what file format you'll want to deliver your product HCRs in and how you want to make them available can help you plan for testing and be ready for customer requests for accessibility information. You can directly use the VPAT, which is in Microsoft Word, and deliver your product ACRs in that format, or HTML or PDF might be the right delivery format for you. Whatever format you use, make sure the final document is accessible. Plan early for how customers might obtain your product ACRs and whether they are viewable or downloadable from your website or made available on request, or only provided when you're directly responding to a bid. This helps you have the right people and process in place before your product hits the market. <clears throat>